Good afternoon. I'm St. Paul Public Schools Superintendent Joe Gothard. We're all here today because a 15-year-old man, Devin Scott, went to school on Friday and did not come home. Devin Scott, and it's important that I say his name, his uncle wanted and said last night, I'm going to say it proudly and with my deepest condolences to his family, Devin Scott. Standing with me today are Mayor Carter, Chief Axel Henry, St. Paul Public Schools Board Chair Jim Boo, Director of Office of Neighborhood Safety, Brooke Blakey, Director of Security Emergency Management for St. Paul Public Schools, Lori Olson, Chief of Administration, Jackie Turner, and Director of Family Engagement, Danny Abrams. Like many of you, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm heartbroken, and emotions that continue to, to flood me with a young man that's gone, and also the violence that we're seeing in our community and in our schools. There's nothing that can bring Devin back. And again, talking to his mother and his father last night, both the night of the incident and last night at a vigil uh, that was held in his honor. The look in their eyes, I know as a school superintendent, is a look that I do not want to see again. The Harding High School staff where this incident took place are not in school again today for a second day. Truthfully, you go into these things and, and you believe you have an idea for what is, what is it going to take for a school community to come back together. I don't know that answer with definitiveness right now. Uh, they're still working. Um, it will not be a normal week. It will not be a normal semester uh, for the Hardy community. It won't. Um, so we're going to continue to support them. Uh, the modified schedule that we will hold for students and families for that matter to come back is something that we continue to work on. But our focus has really been on that community and coming back together uh, with support of our district team. And I also have to say with support of community partners who have been invaluable in this time of great grief. Speaking of that, uh, our partners in the city of St. Paul, we have rec centers open on the east side. They were open early today, providing meals and support to Harding students. We got a call earlier that there are students in a flurry of uh, activities going on there. That's a really good thing. That's where students should be uh, working together in, in our community in a positive way, in a, in a safe space. And as you all know, safety is a complicated um, subject. You know, there, there's many right answers. And for us to land on one that is going to keep everybody safe, is, there's no quick solution to that. There's no quick fix. But I have to tell you, today it doesn't mean that I can sit back. It doesn't mean that I can wait. So as we announced yesterday, St. Paul Public Schools is taking some immediate steps to enhance security at Harding and four of our other high schools that have experienced acts of violence this year. These measures are in addition to a robust safety and security protocols that we have in place. We have school support liaisons who have been indispensable um, in, in the work that we do. Uh, this, this team is wonderful. We'll be adding one additional SSL to Harding effective immediately. Uh, that change has already been made. And it's an important piece of, of who staff on the front lines are in terms of meeting students, meeting families, meeting new students, and, and making sure that, that they feel welcome, making sure that there's a relationship that's built um, that's positive, uh, getting to know the students and, and you know, how to help them thrive as learners and as being a member of a community. They also have to respond immediately when there are violent incidents that take place. We had SSLs at Harding on Friday. We had many other staff that responded to something that in my 29 years in education, I've never responded to. And I'm really appreciative of uh, their response and their efforts, and I know that they are feeling um, as low as one might imagine in this time, um, but in talking with them, um, I'm really proud of them and really happy that I can call them colleagues. Also effective yesterday, we have two officers from the St. Paul Police Department assigned to Harding, as well as Washington Technology Magnet School, Central High School, Como Park Senior High, and Humboldt High School for the rest of the week. And it's important to note this, I've received some comments from the community already. Uh, we do not currently have a contract with the St. Paul Police Department. And we haven't had one for the last three years, since June of 2020. However, I have to say under the leadership of, leadership of the mayor, and former police chief and current police chief, the partnership was never extinguished. 
the partnership never went away. We do work together. We do partner together, uh, sometimes in, in times that are very reactive. But I will tell you what the community doesn't see is the incredible work and communication that goes on behind the scenes between our school sites, between our district and the police, and between the police department and our varied partners throughout the community uh, to make sure that we are staying safe, that we are communicating, that we are in this together. Uh, so I thank Chief Henry uh, for his immediate response to the request from the school district. I want to be clear that these immediate steps are the first step. Uh, we are not going to be able to prevent the challenges that our community is facing and that sadly sometimes come into our schools as well uh, with one brief and quick, swift action. Uh, it is going to take some ongoing communications, ongoing partnership, uh, hearing from our community. Uh, we need to get input, input from, from various community stakeholders, our parents, our students, uh, folks who have been in the community a lot longer than I have, that have a history here, that understand. And we have to bring people together. Um, and one of the themes that I've been most comforted by, and when I say I, I mean our district, um, I am the person, but I represent the entire district, is the number of people who have reached out to just say, what can I do to help? <coughs> it hasn't been, what are you doing? It's, what can I do to help? And that's a theme that I think I opened with or I, I shared Friday night and, uh, in my plea to the community, and people have listened, and people are there and they're ready. Uh, so it's truly up to us, and I believe this as well. We as a district also can't just wait for people to come to us. I and the district have to get out into the community and meet our organizations, our families, our community where they're at, and we have to also create community in that way as well. This is not a one-way street in terms of us expecting the community to do all of our work. We have to meet um, where our folks are, our students, our families, our staff, our community partners, and we have to do great work, and that's my commitment. That's my commitment uh, for Devin and his memory and for 30,000 other amazing students in St. Paul Public Schools, and also to make sure that our staff feel supported, they feel safe, and they feel like they're showing up to their school sites or their programs every day, and their expectation is to do great work, and I've done everything with this community possible to make sure that that happens. So again, I just wanted to share that uh, through the St. Paul Police Department, Office of Neighborhood Safety, so many other partners, uh, the lift that you have given us in this short time since this tragic incident has been uh, incredible. And we're gonna need each other as we move forward together. Uh, and I'm grateful to you. 